It's time. It is finally time for your Disney World vacation, but that means it's also time to start packing those suitcases and park bags. And if you're anything like me, you're doing that at like 11.59 the night before you leave. So let's go over everything you need to pack. We're going to make this easy before taking a trip to the most magical place on earth, because something tells me at least five of these items didn't even cross your mind. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. All right, many times in the midst of all the Disney World planning and excitement, we forget to pack a few key items that make us kick ourselves when we're in the middle of the park day and realize I really needed that. Like maybe shirts for my kid. That maybe slipped my mind once on a Disney trip and I had to go buy a bunch of shirts for him. By the way, Target has a pack of just undershirts for kids that's like eight bucks. So there you go. That'll help. Anyway, we're going to help you keep from making those same mistakes. Some of these items are self-explanatory. They can easily fall through the cracks of your must-bring list, but other items are so far out there you might never have thought they'd be that essential. And that's as well, that's why you follow us here at DFB because we got a bunch of people on our team who go to Disney World solo, we go as couples, we go with kids, and there's a lot of stuff that comes up that you're just like, oh, I got to tell the viewers about that because I never would have thought of that. And that's what this whole video is about. Anyway, we're going to start here with a bonus item for this list, one that's super, super useful and super free. Scan the QR code you see on the screen or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans and grab our complimentary Disney World planning worksheets before you ask, yes, these are free planning worksheets, and they also include a planning checklist, a packing checklist, to help you visualize and keep track of what you're adding to your suitcase. So at 11.59, when you're exhausted, we got it all spelled out for you. Real easy. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff we want to tell you about, so we kind of grouped it into like categories here. And the first category is Mickey might have his mouse tools, but you're going to have your handy dandy park tools with you in Disney World. That's right. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to Disney absolutely kicking myself because I forgot to pack a pair of scissors. Not like full size scissors. Don't be like my mom and get your bag confiscated because you packed like full size weaponry in your bag. Like she had a like a pair of like a legit scissors. Okay, you don't need those, but the small or collapsible ones that don't take up a whole lot of extra space. Those come in so so handy for cutting tags off of mini ears, cutting the moleskin that comes in those big sheets, getting your kid's new toy out of its packaging before they have a meltdown. The kids, not the toys, because that'd be creepy. But seriously, scissors are great to have on hand. And if you're anything like me, the moment you don't have scissors nearby is when you're going to need them the most. I can't tell you how many zip ties there are in Disney World, so don't let that happen to you. Another tool you're going to want to have with you, a tiny screwdriver. Again, this is another great tool for getting those toys out of their packaging since some souvenirs are literally screwed in place within their box. Why would you do that to us toy manufacturers? I do not understand. But it's also nice to have a screwdriver around to help change batteries and toys or devices, fix broken glasses, or make a quick repair on your stroller if need be. Next up, reusable stuff. Packing your reusable items for the parks isn't just going to make you feel like a good person since you'll be helping out the environment, though that's definitely a big part of why we do that, but it can also save you a whole lot of money and prevent you from a whole lot of heartache. Here's the examples. The Disney Festival booths are mighty popular. They've got these in Disney World and Disneyland, Epcot, Disney California Adventure, you know. So they can run out of spoons, knives, forks after a while. So sending you on a wild goose chase to hunt up one at a different kiosk or quick service is a huge waste of your time. But if you bring your own reusable utensils, you can skip that hassle entirely. Not to mention they're easy to wash and store while you're on the go, especially if you buy a set with a portable case. So bringing your own reusable straws also can be a park game changer. Most Disney World restaurants use paper straws now, and while we're all for saving the environment, those straws are gross. They get gummy and disgusting, and they're awful with frozen drinks, so we like to bring our own reusable ones. Just be sure that whatever reusable straws you do choose to bring come with some sort of cleaning brush. That way you don't have to stress about them getting all gunky, too. And as a lot of you know, I've you've been following this channel for a long time, I use the Fade straws. It's P-H-A-D-E. I get them on Amazon, and they 
they are marine biodegradable, which even my marine biologist sister-in-law says is cool, I think. Right, Jacqueline? That's cool, right? Anyway, I use those because I don't have to worry about washing them out. They are disposable, but they are marine biodegradable, so they do degrade in the ocean in like a few days or something like that. So those are going to be, you know, safe and cool too. Anyway, I've talked about those for a really, really long time and it's not an ad or anything. (laughs) I just like them and I use them. Okay, next point, let's talk Mickey bars and popcorn. Even if you plan on loading up on those, it's still nice to bring some goldfish or Cheerios or Cheez-Its or like granola that, you know, I'm sure a lot of you make in your oven at home, right? I don't do that, but you can send me your recipe because I would love to try. Anyway, so we bring those little reusable storage bags. You know how we always talk about bringing Ziploc bags? And that's great. Those are super, super useful. I also still bring my Ziploc bags, but those reusable storage bags are ones you can just refill with the same food every single day and bring it in with you and not make quite so much waste for yourself. So these little storage bags are good for snacks. They can keep your phone safe from rain or water rides. They can hold that giant lollipop that your kid ate like one bite of and now he's done with it or a big old cookie at one of the confectionaries. These snack baggies can hold a lot of leftovers, stuff like that. So super, super useful. And you don't want to waste any of these snacks at the Disney World prices because that's just a total waste of money. So next reusable item, if you don't want to pay for a bottle of soda or water every few hours to stay hydrated, yeah, I know soda doesn't really hydrate you, does it very much? Take your handy dandy comfort water bottle with you. Disney World has lots of water refill stations and they're adding even more all the time, which is awesome. And they're free to use. And for the record, no, this water does not taste like the gross metallic, like warm water you get out of the water fountains. The water for these refill stations is more purified and cold and refreshing. So this is actually a a good, a relatively good option. So bring that water bottle. Next up is something that's near and dear to my heart personally, and I know it's dear to Bria's heart too. If you don't know, Bria is our script writer here, and that's feet relief. Now, I know you don't want to hear this, but Disney hurts, and it especially hurts your feet. Now, don't get me wrong. It is a heap of fun, but when you're constantly on the go, riding rides, walking bottlenecked pathways, your feet are sweating, they're rubbing against your shoes, you have blisters you never knew could possibly exist, it is good to have some relief before, during, and even after your big park day. You've heard me tell this story before, but I have actually had to purchase like multiple pairs of socks in Disney World to like put on my feet and then try to walk in flip flops because I had giant blisters. That's not a good plan. You want to f- <laughs> you want to find some of the other things that we're telling you to pack on this list. At this point, I always have blister prevention pads and band-aids in my park bag. They just live there. They also live in all of my suitcases because you are going to have situations where shoes can do you just fine when you're at home but when you're in Disney and it's wet and it's sunny and you're riding water rides and you're sweating those shoes are going to do things to your feet that you would never expect so you're going to get blisters no matter how much you prepare you still could get blisters it's happened to me a million times so definitely bring those blister prevention pads and that moleskin I always have moleskin with me no matter what now and if you have a pair of shoes that you love but they aren't quite supportive enough or you want to add a little extra support to some good shoes, you can always add those inserts to them. You can find those on Amazon, at big box stores, wherever. And then after your park day, this sounds unbelievably silly, but I'm going to say it anyway because it has made all the difference for so many of the people on our team here. A hydrated foot mask. Doesn't that sound amazing after a day in Disney World? Yeah, it is is after miles and miles of walking around the parks putting on a foot mask once you're back in your room can help heal that skin and it's just really really relaxing now i know some of us can't do that we get home at like 11 p.m 12 p.m after the fireworks and we have to get up at six for rope drop so some for some of us it's not possible but every once in a while if you've got a resort day planned for the next day or if you got a break day do the foot mask you're gonna love it okay And I've got an even better suggestion for you, a foot massage roller. Okay, are you actually gonna pack this in your suitcase? Maybe not, but it feels so good. after you walk around the parks all day. Sorry, I'm just gonna put it in here. You don't have to pack it. I'm just gonna put it in here. One of those foot massage rollers, they're really cheap. So you can just grab one of those and throw it in there. You don't even have to tell anybody. All right, moving on. Our next category for you is sleep aids. 
Disney World Hotel or not, you're still going to be sleeping somewhere that's not your own bed, probably. And that means the environment you'll be laying your head down each night may not provide you with ideal sleeping conditions. So first and foremost, bring something familiar from home to get you comfy. Maybe that's an aromatherapy spray, a white noise machine, a specific pillowcase. Some people even bring their own pillow. My mom always brings her own pillow. She has a squishy pillow that she likes and she brings it everywhere. I don't have room for a whole pillow in my suitcase, but maybe you do. Or maybe you're driving and you can just pack the car with everything, right? But quick note, if you're just bringing a pillowcase, make sure you somehow set an alarm on your phone or something to not forget it when you leave because I have definitely definitely forgotten stuff in the room because it's the same color as the thing in the room. So now you guys know I actually bring my own fitted sheet sometimes to Disney World because they don't have fitted sheets on the beds there. And my fitted sheet that I bring is dark blue so that I know it's different (laughs) and I see it when I leave so I can always remember to bring it with me. All right, now that we've got you all settled in, let's deal with the outside. Hotels can be surprisingly quiet, especially during slower times of the year, but other times you're going to hear a lot more action going on, especially at Disney. You're going to hear kids running down the hallways and screaming at all hours of the day and night, I promise you. The pool is going to be really, really loud. So if you're paying extra for one of those pool view rooms, that's going to be really loud, especially if you're trying to sleep in in the morning or if you're trying to take a nap in the afternoon or if you're kids trying to take a nap in the afternoon. That's the big nightmare, right? Because you really need them to sleep. Anyway, there's also that issue of mornings. Those get really, really busy at Disney World hotels. Families are going to get up early to get breakfast and hit the parks as they open, which means there's going to be a lot of noise in the hallways at like 6 a.m. If you're the type of person who prefers to sleep in a little bit, get to those parks later on, you need to drown out those sounds. I always bring a sound machine. There are really little tiny ones that sound kind of tinny, but I bring just a regular size sound machine. Um, It's about the size of my hand. And I personally think it's useful to invest in that slightly larger one because it does have a good relaxing sound that's easy to fall asleep to. But if you don't want to bring a sound machine, you can also find some smartphone apps that do the same thing. Then you can maybe bring a little tiny speaker or something like that, or you can just use your phone. Now, sound machines are probably going to cost around 15, 20 bucks. The ones with all the bells and whistles are going to cost a little bit more. Or it all depends on what you want. I also like to bring along earplugs. I always have earplugs with me. They not only help me block out the sounds going on outside of the room, but also inside the room. Because yes, my husband does snore. And I probably do too. I just don't know. Next on our list is those germ killers. Yeah, magic is not the only thing being spread around the parks, my friends. There's a reason we call it a giant Petri dish. And there's a reason why every time one of my team members comes back from Disney World, they've got a cold or they got sick or something's going on. Everybody knows they get the gunk from Disney World. So considering the fact that you're going to be in multiple parks with thousands of other people, you're bound to be swapping germs each time you touch a ride lap bar or hold onto a handrail or... Honestly, push any door open. Nobody wants to go back to work after a Disney trip feeling awful. So sanitizing your hands as often as possible is going to be a big deal when it comes to staying healthy during and after your trip. As much as we hated the masks and the constant hand sanitization during COVID, I will say I didn't get sick a single time coming back from those trips. And now I get sick all the time when I come back from my Disney World trips. So pack things like hand sanitizer spray, sanitation gel bottles, sanitation wipes. Those are typically sold at drugstores for, you know, two to ten dollars, depending on how much of it you get. And the Disney Resort gift shops do sell sanitizer and wipes too, just in case you forget your own, but they will be more expensive than the ones you're going to find in the non-Disney drugstores, at least by a couple of dollars at, you know, it's an it's it's a significant amount. So if you're wanting to save some money, buy them ahead of time. And it's not a bad idea to purchase a sanitation gel bottle holder to latch onto your park bag. Obviously, it's not necessary, but it'll serve as a reminder to sanitize when you get off rides. Next category is identification. Now, ID is important in Disney World, and I mean that in two completely different ways. First, you're going to want to make sure you have your legit, valid, totally legal driver's license ID with you. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to buy alcohol if you're 21 and over, or check into your hotel, or even drive yourself around the parks. I know, you may be thinking, well, of course I'm going to bring my ID with me. Why wouldn't I? But can I just tell you how many times we have almost left our IDs in our other purses, or wallets, or glove box, and assumed we had it with 
with us instead of double checking to guarantee we had it with us. You know, if you've been watching this channel for very long, that I have left my ID at Via Napoli before and tried to get on an airplane and didn't have that driver's license. And it was a nightmare. Everything turned out okay, but don't just learn from my mistakes. Don't do it. Make sure you have your ID with you when you get there and when you leave. So check your bag, check it again, check it one more time for good measure because you absolutely 110% need your ID. So what other thing needs identification during your trip? Your stroller. Now a different type of ID, it's pretty easy to find a designated spot to park your stroller so your whole family can enjoy riding Peter Pan's flight or whatever ride together. But you know what's not as easy? Finding your stroller after the ride. So let's talk about ID for your stuff. Not only do lots of strollers look alike, but occasionally cast members need to move strollers to a different location in order to accommodate operational needs in the park. So our advice is to decorate your stroller with an easy to identify, not too expensive object. Doesn't need to be fancy, a brightly colored bandana tied on the handle can do the trick, or maybe you can add a bit of shiny flare or a sign that makes it stick out from the sea of other strollers. Some folks even purchase Disney balloons while they're in the park to tie around their stroller handles as an easily identifiable marker. You know how I feel about tying balloons on your stroller handle. It is a a nightmare to push a stroller through the park with the balloon hitting you in the face constantly and hitting other people in the face. So I'm not a huge proponent of the Disney balloon on your stroller thing, but I get it. Some people need to do it. But remember, balloons are not allowed in Animal Kingdom because they can be potentially dangerous to the wildlife. So you should use something else as a clear stroller marker there instead. And also, if you go to Magic Kingdom and then hop over to Animal Kingdom, know that they're not going to let you take the balloon that you bought in Magic Kingdom into Animal Kingdom. So find something else to do with that balloon or don't buy it that morning, buy it on a different morning that you're not going to Animal Kingdom. Fake it till you make it. This happens a lot when you're on a Disney trip. You're not always going to be able to stick with your regular morning or evening routine, and that means you may not be able to wash your hair in the morning or reapply your makeup when it gets all smudged and sweaty, or even when you do regular skincare at night, especially if you've hit the parks real hard that day and you're exhausted. And that means you're going to need a plan B to help you out until you actually can return to your regularly scheduled routines. If you can't wash your hair as often as you'd like to during your trip, or if you're like me and sometimes you actually leave the hotel without ever getting in the shower. I'm sorry. Is that too much? Too much information? Okay. I apologize. (laughs) You definitely need to pack the dry shampoo. Spray it on. Voila. The volume in your hair magically returns. You're not all nasty and greasy. No pixie dust necessary. On Amazon, you can get a six pack of dry shampoo for around 26 bucks, but you're not going to need six cans. Just one is going to do. And you can just grab it from your grocery store or anywhere else. Now, the Florida sun is going to wreak havoc on your face, which makes those nighttime photo pass pictures like really gross. So to preserve your makeup as long as possible, a makeup setting spray can really work when you are in Orlando. Now, if you don't mind changing up your brand a little, you may want to go with some straight up waterproof makeups instead. They've got them for like 13 bucks, six bucks. There's a L'Oreal foundation powder for about 13 bucks, a Maybelline mascara for six bucks. That way you can walk through the new journey of water inspired by Moana experience in Epcot or ride the soon to be Tiana's Bayou Adventure in Magic Kingdom without worrying about everything running down your face. All right, now it's time for the big one. How are you going to keep your face fresh and clean without having to worry about the five-step procedure you might rely on back home? Well, when we're looking for skincare to take to Disney with us, we ask ourselves two important questions. One, can I easily throw this into my park bag? And two, does it also have some sort of SPF? We got to protect ourselves from the Orlando sun. And we got a post on our website that highlights a few specific products that answer yes to both of those questions. So I'll go ahead and add a link down in the description, just in case you want to check it out on your own time. Now, this is a weird one to put into this video, but hey, you know what? We're open to any and all suggestions, so we're going to talk about home decor. Yep, you can gussy up your Disney hotel room or Fort Wilderness cabin to help you celebrate whatever you're celebrating, and it can be a really, really fun part of your Disney World trip. Like, you're going to decorate for a holiday or a graduation or a birthday or an anniversary can be a fun surprise for someone you're traveling with. But there is a catch to this, especially when it comes to outdoor decor over at the Disney Vacation Club Villas. 
Balcony decor is not technically allowed at DVC resorts for a couple of reasons. Disney wants you to steer clear of using any decorations that require tape or heavy duty adhesives that could damage the walls and railings. And they're also all about their storytelling. So when you put up outdoor decor that clashes with their vibe, it can be a bit magic breaking for folks. That being said, little window clings and stuffed animals peeking past the curtains of your typical Disney hotel should be totally acceptable. And indoor decor is great too. Again, as long as you're not using any decorations that are going to break things or peel paint off the walls. Note, in the past, you used to be able to have your room decorated for you before you arrived using Disney floral and gifts, but since the florist situation has recently changed over to a new third-party company called Magical Floral and Gifts, they can't go in your room anymore. (laughs) So you can still order decor for your room, but the company can't put it in there before you get there. Instead, you'll either have to pick up your decor at the resort's front desk, or you can have it delivered straight up to your room just as long as you're already in there to receive it. And what can you order exactly from Magical? Magical floral and gifts, well, fun stuff like giant character balloons and snack baskets and birthday boxes and bouquets. Depending on what you order will determine your price point, but expect to pay around $45 to $200 plus for an item. If you plan on staying at a Fort Wilderness cabin or campground around the holidays, the decor becomes a little more extravagant. In fact, even non-resort guests enjoy renting a golf cart here just to ride around the resort and check out all the guests' Christmas decor at Fort Wilderness, from lights to inflatables to projections. Again, there are certain rules and regulations you've got to follow when it comes to decorating your RV or cabin, but according to Disney, as long as you're following the Walt Disney World Resort property rules and not doing anything that would cause damage to the property, you're usually welcome to decorate your cabin. Okay, next one, you knew it was coming. We are gonna talk about the weather. Orlando weather is wild. One minute, the sun is scalding your scalp and all other exposed skin, and the next minute, it's soaking you to the bone with one of those major rainstorms, which is why it's best to come prepared. Staying cool is gonna be a big deal when you're spending hours on end in the heat, so be sure to pack things like cooling towels and handheld misting fans. And don't forget about the kids. The sun isn't gonna skip over your little one just because they're hanging out in a stroller, so bring those stroller covers and clip-on fans to keep your babies cool and comfortable comfortable during the day. For extra layers of protection against that Floridian sun, be sure to pack your sunscreen, the sunglasses, and the hats, you know, those key items you use all summer long. If you're really wanting to protect yourself against UV rays, you can also get a UV umbrella. We found a good one on Amazon, and if you don't want to use it, it's easy to fit in your bag. It comes in a bunch of different colors, and you can match whatever Disney bounding outfit you have that day. UV clothing can also save your skin on those sunbeam heavy days. This can come in short and long sleeve varieties, and while the long sleeves may sound miserable at first, these types of UV fabrics are lightweight and can protect your limbs from getting crispy without you having to worry about reapplying sunscreen to them later on in the day, and they're pretty breathable. Honestly, any type of portable umbrella is good to have on hand, especially when an afternoon storm attempts to rain out your Disney day. I'd also recommend getting a poncho before you head into the parks. Disney sells their ponchos for $10 to $12 each, and while they're pretty cute and have a general kind of Disney logo on them, if you're going to buy four ponchos for your family, you're going to spend 50 bucks just for ponchos. Meanwhile, local pharmacies or big box stores are going to sell them to you for two to three bucks. Unless you get a pack of like 10, which will end up adding up to the price of like one Disney World poncho. Crazy. And one more thing. If you plan on wearing tennis shoes to the park, bring extra socks with you. That way you can change your socks after they get all soaked and avoid having to wear wet socks all day. This is where the reusable bags can come in handy too. Just tuck those wet socks away so they don't soak and smell up your park bag. Okay, next category on our list is that wardrobe catastrophe. In the battle of Disney World versus your clothes, don't let Disney World win this one. When you are in the parks, you're going to be pushing your shoes and shorts and socks and shirts to their absolute limits, and many of these everyday articles of clothing can buckle under the brutality that is a Disney day. For example, let's say you're minding your own business, enjoying a delightful Mickey premium bar, when all of a sudden there goes a big old glob of chocolate on your nice white Disney tea. That's why we highly recommend bringing a stain remover pen or a similar product to help pre-treat any stains you might encounter so they don't end up permanently ruining your clothes for the rest of the day or the rest of your clothes life. 
It's not just the stains you gotta look out for though, it's the rips and tears too. Several Disney resorts used to equip their rooms with cute little sewing kits back in the day, which you can still sometimes get from the front desk if you're in need. But just in case our resort doesn't have one of these nifty little lifesavers, we pack a small travel sewing kit, complete with those scissors, a thread, sewing needles, extra buttons. You can usually find these travel kits online for around five bucks and I always have one in my suitcase. Now, taking the whole stain remover pen to the next level, if you're gonna be taking an extended Disney World getaway, say a week or even longer, then you might wanna consider setting aside some extra time to do laundry. Or even if you're staying for a shorter amount of time, you may still wanna do some laundry if you wanna rewear something or if your clothes are kinda of gross after being rained on or sweat soaked and maybe even stained with plastic cheese. In a DVC villa, you'll have the convenience of a washer or dryer unit in a lot of those rooms. But if you're not spending the big bucks on a big room like that, all of Disney's resorts also have self-service laundry facilities available that you can use for an extra cost. If you need laundry detergent, you can buy single-use boxes in the laundry facility for a dollar, though you'll receive one complimentary detergent box inside your villa if you're staying in one of those villas. But if you wanna save some money, you may wanna pack laundry detergent and dryer sheets from home. Collapsible laundry bags are also nifty to have on hand. That way, when you're finished with a load, you can fold them up and carry them all the way back to your room real easily. But what do you do with the dirty stuff? Easy, bring along a trash bag to separate the clean stuff from the smelly stuff. To be fair, many times I'll just stick with taking a trash bag during my Disney trip instead of finding the extra time to do laundry. Then I can just mindlessly stuff all the dirty stuff in there and worry about washing them all when I get back home. But if you are planning to do a resort day or a pool day, most of the laundry facilities can be found near the pools. So just set up camp at the pool for the day and do a quick load of laundry and you are basically all set. The next thing to pack in your Disney World suitcase is distractions. Trust me on this one, you're gonna need plenty of distractions to help you get through your Disney trip. It sounds silly, right? Like you're in Disney World, why would you need a distraction when there's so many rides and characters all the time? Because Disney is not just about the fun stuff, it also means waiting. Lots and lots and lots of waiting. And that's not just for the peak seasons, it's for the slow seasons too. Waiting in ride lines can lead to lots of squirming kids and a whole lot of are we there yet, which is why the Play Disney Parks app, which is free, can be a lifesaver to download onto your smartphone, especially if you're not wanting to bring your kid's bulky tablet into the park with you. The Play Disney Parks app offers games and trivia, and it can amuse your family while they're waiting in line because they've got some exclusive games just for that particular ride and it's really fun. Not to mention if Galaxy's Edge is just too busy during your next visit because it gets packed on that little planet, you can still spend your time thoroughly exploring this area without getting in line for any of the rides or the quick services here thanks to the Play Disney Parks app data pad feature that allows you to interact with this area of the park in a whole new way that's going to be even super fun for kids and adults. You get to hack the tech, you get to translate the Arabesh language, collect cargo, you can eavesdrop on fellow Batuan residents. I'm actually really impressed with this and I think they did a really good job with it. So if you haven't already used this to kind of distract yourself from crowds, I highly recommend it even for little kids. Now, if you have a Magic Band Plus, you can take it to the next level and use the Play Disney Parks app to become a bounty hunter in Galaxy's Edge. You play a scavenger hunt type game there. And you can also use the Play Disney Parks app to play the free DuckTales World Showcase Adventure over in Epcot, which is one of my favorite ways to explore the different pavilions and keep my kid entertained along the way. Aside from Play Disney Parks, there are plenty of other free apps out there, and these are going to keep you and your kids entertained while you're in ride lines. We love using Heads Up. That's really fun. Play Nine is an easy to play card game. You can play with multiple friends who also have the app. Trivia Crack is a classic, but one that older audiences will probably enjoy more. And Color Fi is kind of like a digital coloring book. But if you want to skip out on the ride lines as much as possible, and instead of having to pass your time waiting around, in them, Disney Genie Plus can help you out with that, giving you the chance to select which rides you want to book a lightning lane for so you can enter the much shorter queue lines throughout the day. So Genie Plus ranges between $15 and $39 per person per day. You can learn more about this service over on our Genie Plus playlist next. Whatever you decide to do, just be sure to bring a portable charger with you. You don't want to drain all your phone's battery with all those apps in the morning and be phoneless for the rest of the day. It's also a good idea to bring USB cords just in case you take a break somewhere in the park that has easy access to charging stations, like in the new Epcot World Celebration Gardens or the Tangled Rest Area in Magic Kingdom. Now, let's say you're sitting down for a nice meal at a table service restaurant and your kids are complaining about having to wait for food instead of being out in the parks. 
That's when those sticker books you can find at literally the dollar store back home become great distractors. The more stickers, the better. Also, if your kid is just a little bit older, they may get a kick out of a Mad Libs booklet or those story cubes you can buy at your local brick and mortar. Just roll, look at the images on the dice, and create a story based on what pictures you get. Oh, and if you've got some of those fidget toys laying around, like fidget spinners or poppets or tangle toys, you'll be surprised how entertaining those can be for a certain amount of time. All right, here's a bonus one for you, y'all. We're going to talk about bringing wine. Admit it, having a tall glass of Moscato or Pinot Grigio after a long day in Disney sounds delightful, right? Now, while you're not allowed to bring your own alcohol inside the Disney parks, you can bring it to your hotel room or even have it delivered through a grocery delivery service. Note that you will have to show your ID to pick up the grocery order if it includes alcohol, but that's easy peasy. You just have to meet the delivery person at Bell Services in order to do this. There is a specialty Disney wine that you can purchase at the resort gift shops too, but again, you're looking at a heftier price point for it. So bringing your own bottle of whatever your drink of choice may be might be preferable for you. And don't forget to pack a bottle opener too. Otherwise, you could be stuck with a nice bottle of wine and no way to actually drink it. All right, friends, anything missing from today's list that you want to tell everyone about, add it to the comments so we can make this video as thorough as possible. I know that every time I go to Disney World, there's something else that I want to add to the list, and I'm sure you are the same way. So help us out. Let us know the things that we're forgetting and that you have forgotten on your Disney trips before that you wish you hadn't. Speaking of forgetting, don't forget to download our free Disney World planning worksheets right now over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans. And also go check out that Genie Plus playlist. That's going to be super, super helpful if you want any info on that particular service. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.